And welcome back. It's time for our Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, uh, you wrote a commentary this week discussing school choice, uh, freedom really in terms of school choice. And this week as well, several educators filed a lawsuit uh, against the, <coughs> excuse me, against the Lindsay Nicole uh, Henry Scholarship Law, which gives school choice to parents of special needs children. They want this thing declared unconstitutional. What are your thoughts on the on these Talk ideas. a little bit about that first and then touch on the broader picture. You know, the um, 12 people have sued to shut down the Lindsay Nicole Henry Scholarship Program, have it declared unconstitutional. Uh, their core of their argument, they make many arguments, but the core of the argument is that the program benefits uh, private schools and that that's a violation of the Constitution. But much like programs that benefit college students who choose to go, to private schools, uh, military veterans, for example. This is a program that is aimed at the individuals, in other words, the children with special needs. Uh, it's a scholarship mechanism that public policy has determined is in the best interest of the people to allow these children to have access to a better education than they might get otherwise. Um, the program does not specify, in fact, is neutral on where the money goes because that's triggered by the decision of parents. I will say that interestingly, both in Indiana and in Arizona, programs like this, nothing's ever identical from state to state, but programs like this have been upheld and found constitutional mm -hmm. specifically because they follow the child rather than an institution or a program. And frankly, uh, public education dollars, I think you can make a pretty strong case they ought to follow uh, the child and not systems. Uh, because if we become obsessed with systems, uh, we're not focusing on the purpose of public provision of resources for education, which is to educate the next generation of young people. Now, with all that as the specific for Oklahoma, step back a little bit, there is now 14, there are now 14 different tax credit scholarship programs um, in the United States. There are 18 scholarship programs, which is a little bit different. It's uh, allowing uh, direct uh, aid uh, through provision of a pot of money. There's six states that allow personal credits and tax deductions to build up programs of choice. And then there's one state, Arizona, that has what many choice advocates believe is the best program, education scholarship uh, program, uh, which is very open-ended. Um, and it's still small, it's in its first year, and it has been uh, so far upheld in the court system. So. Looking to the future, I see a renaissance of school choice in America, but I also see continuing challenges mm -hmm. from defenders of the status quo. Um, and you know, I'm hopeful that Oklahoma's program survives, but the challenge is a serious one. The, they had one challenge a year ago to this program, right. and it survived. And that was kind of a procedural ruling. This one will probably get to the substance of uh, the First Amendment questions. Let's stick with uh, education and talk about Common Core. Obviously, this has been a hot topic of discussion uh, in recent months. You contend in a recent report uh, that conservatives, conservatives should stop fighting over this issue. Uh, it has divided them. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, it's at the risk of overgeneralization, I think, uh, that a lot of the discussion is being driven by conservatives. I want to add that there's some very thoughtful liberal bloggers like John Thompson here in Oklahoma City and others who have some concerns about aspects of the Common Core. The National uh, Teacher Unions have concern about the Common Core, particularly the American Federation of Teachers, part of the AFL-CIO. So with that as a preface, um, there was a debate at the recent State Policy Network meeting uh, in a public session between uh, two conservative advocates for Common Core and two against. And I was persuaded by uh, the words of Professor Jay Green, who's from Arkansas next door. He said the opposition is so strong that there's not going to be a way to decide if Common Core ever succeeds. And that besides, it's dividing conservative or center-right, if you will, mm -hmm. conservative and libertarian energy unnecessarily. Now, Phyllis Hudecki, the former Secretary of Education, a person I respect, Oklahoma Business Education Coalition, uh, who helped to fashion some of the Common Core standards, strongly defended it. But we are so chopped up. My, my friend Paul Weirich, the late Paul Weirich, who worked for all those years in Washington, said conservatives should work on things that unite them 
and divide the left. And I think those might be words of wisdom for national and state conservatives as they look at this issue. It's time to unite around choice and other reforms rather than continue to burn up all this energy on Common Core. And you can read more about these and other topics at capitalbeatok.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.